Yeah, we can get started. Um, thought Michelle was going to be able to jump on. One thing I wanted to check with her, and we can do it later, is to see if there's any uh, minutes to approve. Um, so we'll start with roll call for who's here. Uh, say your first name, say your full name, say you're here. Wayne? Wayne Sachuk here. Mark? Mark Cameron here. Carolyn? Carolyn Coffey here. Thank you. Kurt? Garrett Lubitz here. And Phil Lear present. Thank you. Um, John, you're kind of driving this bus. Do you want to <laughs> take off and maybe back up, uh, back up a month or two and sort of bring us up to date? You got it. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let's see. All right, so um, just to bring you guys up to speed on the CM at risk process. Um, so as you may recall, we issued the RFQ on June 29th. After a few addenda, uh, responses were received on July 18th. We received three responses from Colantonio, Commodore, and Fontaine. Uh, the DCAM data on those firms is as follows. So this is Department of Capital Asset Management for the state. Everybody has to have, um, you know, be approved to do public work. And this is essentially the report cards that come in the front of the package uh, with those firms. 13 projects for Col Antonio, 16 for Commodore, 12 for WT Rich. All three had scores in the 90s. 80 is considered passing. If you have a firm that's under 80, uh, they may not get a DCAM certificate. It's occasional, occasionally, they may have a project or two that falls below that, but we'd like to try to stay away from those. Um, the single project limits are all over 60 million, which clearly that means the state has said they can handle this 15 to $16 million project. And their aggregate work limit for the firms is significant as well, triple digit millions, meaning they can handle a lot of work at a given time. Um, all the references were positive. Um, I think, uh, um, yeah, sorry, I have a, a typo in there. I said WT Rich, that was a firm that um, didn't submit. They pulled it at the last minute, my bad. Um, so call and tell me. I'm sorry. I thought no, WT Rich I did. Fontaine here. This is a mistake. Let me get rid of that. Steve threw me. He sent me a text calling out and he got me bamboozled. So thank you, Steve, for pointing that out. Um, so it's Col Antonio, Commodore, and WT Rich. I apologize. Um, so the data here is is as uh, as presented. Right. Again, the references were pro were positive, and we would recommend. Um, we'll go back to this in a minute, but when we're all done. I think the selection committee would recommend that the building committee endorse their decision to invite those three firms into the request for proposal phase. What does that mean? So what that means is we would issue the RFP. Um, we would shoot to have that out next week. We would have an informational meeting basically sometime a week or so later. And again, these dates are approximate with the RFP due a week after that. Um, we would have a chance to go through those, review them, uh, conduct the interviews, uh, probably the following week, probably the week right before Labor Day. And then final select, you know, maybe that week, um, you know, to, to right around, you know, just before Labor Day, then getting them kicked off with the estimate in, in the kind of the heart of September. And um, when the RFP for the firm uh, comes in, they're going to be pricing a couple of things for us. They're, as I've said before, pre-construction, they're going to give us their general conditions based on the duration of construction, 16 to 18 months, something in there. And again, they're gonna give us their fee. What are they gonna charge us for profit on an estimated 15 to $16 million project? So that will come as a percentage. And before, just as a side note, before we send this out, the RFP contract is going to have to be reviewed by council. The problem here, though, is that we don't have some, any real clear guidance about when town meeting is going to take place. So 
I've got a couple of options here that I want to show you and just kind of indicate what that does to us. So kind of the first option here is based on, you know, going to town meeting with an estimate. Okay, so, you know, the RFP for the CA, let me get my pointer here. With me. So the RFP for the CM is due in August. By, you know, by the time we get them interviewed and contracted, late September, early October, they're doing the estimate. Okay, this October data point then gets sent over for town meeting in December, ballot vote in January. After a successful town meeting and ballot vote, we would end up starting the bidding in January. Obviously the deadline for the ballot in November, which could have preceded town meeting, is already closed given the fact that it's a you know, a large election, a large election year. So we start bidding in January, couple, but within a couple of months, we're executing the GMP, which is basically the total cost of the project. And they show a couple of months lag because, you know, again, in this construction, current construction market, you know, you basically have, um, you know, some waiting time for procurement with some of these things. Some, some things, the lead time is so long, you don't want to burn time with the contractor on site, but you have to give them the time to go out and buy your buy your your items. Bottom line is pre-construction duration in this scenario is eight months. It takes us from August to March. Okay. Uh, second option: Could we possibly get the project to bid before the December town meeting? Okay, so this is a this this is a tight time frame in here because your first two points are largely the same. The RFP is due, you get the estimate, we say, okay, this is gonna work with what we're trying to do for the town, it's within budget. Uh, that, that we, you know, we think we can, we can talk to people about and we try to bid that job between October and December, okay? Hard bids in hand. This strategically, this is a little bit difficult, it might be a little bit difficult, any hiccups would make it hard, but it's a possibility, so we wanted to put it out there meaning you would have a ballot vote in January, okay? And right after that, you would sign the GMP, which means you would be starting construction in March, roughly, okay? That reduces your pre-construction from eight months down to five months. Again, and you're, you're gonna be paying for pre-construction. That's the $200,000 that the, the, the last town meeting approved. Now, the third, ask, the, the, the third option here is what happens if, all of these other projects that are they're trying to glom together can't get their act together for us. And for some strange reason, we do our estimate, but then we can't get on a, a ballot in a town meeting until May, okay? That's 10 months of pre-construction. That's almost a year from now, okay? That we're, or almost a year's time that we're talking about before we actually can get up and get running. Okay, and then executing the GMP in June. So you can see that puts us from, you know, best case scenario, bidding the job in December to bidding the job in June. And, you know, what does that all mean for costs and escalation and all of that? So, you know, when we talk about the process of, you know, trying to inform the CM when we put this project out there to them, you know, as I said back a few slides ago, we have to we have to identify a few things, a few durations. You know, what's the duration of pre-construction? What's the duration of construction? That does kind of, you know, it's going to be 16 to 18 months, however we sliced it, whenever we start it. But again, the pre-construction slides, but it's not so much, I'm not, I'm not as concerned as, you know, what's it going to cost Cohasset for an extra month of pre-construction, 10, 15, 20000 dollars It came more about the percentage point you may be adding to the construction number itself, because you're, you know the price is escalating, escalating, escalating until we get to bid. So, I guess you know this to kind of throw this out there, and we talked a little bit about this at the uh, pre-qual committee the other day. You know, how do we push this thing along to? Um, you know, basically let the town know we're going to be ready to go. You know, we're going to, you know, the design is at 90%. They're moving. They got restarted. Um, we're going to have a CM on board, you know, within a month. 
And the question will be, you know, as we solicit proposals from these guys, we're going to ask about an aggressive schedule to get this thing bid and see, you know, see how they would propose, see how they would see if they could make that work. So we'll get that some better information back when we get their responses as well. Um, so that's that kind of kind of brings us up to up to speed. I know it, that's a lot of information, um, but you know, bottom line is happy with the firms that res are responding. Uh, one caveat is even though three firms were qualified, which is what you have to have for the state to not have to re-advertise and do it all again. When we invite them, hopefully with the committee's, you know, yes to do so, I'd do that tomorrow. They all say, yes, send me the RFP. It's a chance somebody could say no on a project we just did. We got seven responses, we qualified five. And when we invited them, two of them right off the bat said, no, we're good. You know, we're busy. Okay, so we're down to three on that job for bids. It's a chance we could only have two bids here, but who knows, we have to, kind of run this out and, and see where it goes. Um, but again, we remember we still have the ability to negotiate certain pieces of the response uh, when they come back. So even if we have fewer numbers, that's okay. Um, questions? I have, at last night's uh, selectmen's meeting, they were talking about having a special town meeting perhaps in um, September. And then they talked about November, and then they talked about December. <laughs> I don't know if Michelle knows what the three different dates were, and why they had, why they, you know, what are they really planning on doing? I, I can't answer why they threw out three dates, but I believe special town meeting will be the first week or second week in December. Um, uh, it. Definitely won't be in September. Um, that's just a month away, so there's not even time to really get things together. I think maybe the dates, Wayne, were um, for warrant articles. They have to be completed perhaps by the end of September um, to print the book by November for a December meeting. Okay. I didn't see last night's meeting, but that would make sense. Okay, so um, maybe they'd be describing what it is they had to do. Uh, yeah. To do it, rather than say that they were going to do it because yeah. it seemed, seemed too strange with me. Yeah. So, um, so let's say that it's December then, first or second week in December. Yeah. Then, they, then they're going to start in, in uh, September and October to put everything together. So that means yeah. that we have to be really ready for that, pro, you know, for that uh, initial work that has to be done. Right. So, right. It becomes, if, so it becomes a question. I mean, obviously, guys, if, if we were to reach out to subs or excuse, excuse me, to the CMs and say, hey, this is one of the things we're thinking about. And we talk about this at kind of the, the information session, of course, with them. You know, there is that double edged sword. Of, and, and again, to be clear, we would still do the estimate. The estimate timeline doesn't change. The first thing the CM does when they get on board is confirm the estimate with with Phil's uh, Phil uh, Johnson Roberts estimate, okay, so that we know kind of what that total project budget is. The now, question becomes is if we can go to bid and kind of better that information and come to town meeting in December with bids in hand, the only issue would be is you're not getting them weeks before. We would get the final number the week before, something like that. We would be, you know, we'd be landing on empty basically, trying to get a get a a number that's based on bids for the audience and town meeting floor. So, you know, as opposed to just an estimate that's got more contingency in it. So there's there's positives to it. The only qu question I have, you know, kind of put back to you guys is I don't want ever there to be a thought, oh, they're rushing this. They're really trying hard to jam this down our throat. It, you're still gonna have the estimate and a total project budget that's been checked and based on, you know, a couple data points. But your option then is to wait till, you know, after the holidays and bid this thing after and go to the marketplace in January, because you don't want to bid, you don't want to bid across the holidays. It's a recipe for um, crappy bids because you don't have everybody's full attention because vacations and family and, you know, 
all that other stuff. You, you, you never get great bids over the holidays. So does that mean another town meeting or do you have to wait until the annual town meeting? No, what it, what it means, Wayne, is you would go to town meeting in December with a number based on an estimate. Right. And we have to make sure that the budget comes into that estimate. So we can, if, if the question, the, the December special town meeting is kind of, I think what we've all been targeting for a while now. I think that, you know, we go with an estimate or we go with bids. I think the question is, I think the concern some of us have more is, is if they're gonna stick us with these other capital projects and those capital projects aren't ready to, to kind of go to town meeting floor, maybe because, you know, there'd been discussion about doing these things as a group, you know, we don't want to wait as a project anymore. There's no reason to, because you're just adding cost and time, you know, oh, well, let's wait till the spring. Well, costs are just going to keep going up. So the question is, is are we going to be able to get this project to town meeting in December? And we still have to figure out if we can do it with bids in hand, but we can certainly at least do it with a construction document estimate, which, you know, it's the most detailed estimate of the three you get. It's the closest one to the end. So you, you, you know, you should have the most, um, most confidence in it, I guess is the, mm -hmm. um, don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> so, so I think, so I think there's a whole other piece to this as well. So if we go to special town meeting, which is the first or second week in December, um, and we go with our construction estimate, there are some discussions now about our temporary space and where we're going to go. And I don't know if we're putting the cart before the horse with that, mm -hmm. but I think they almost want a remedy for that because as you know, the elevator is not working. Um, there's no end to fix it at this point. Um, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I think we also have to figure out, are we putting the cart before the horse trying to find temporary space now? Um, should we be going out to bid now on temporary space so we have that full picture come December town meeting? I don't think you're going to well, get a deal that's going to be flexible enough with your 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 space. And I think that you know that there's some space on 3A now in the workstation area there that uh, um, has 8,000 square feet and, and you could move into that tomorrow. Um, and because the business is just... Uh, we can't. We can't. So we tried, Wayne. We we did. We tore town hall call. We toured that site. Go ahead. So we toured that site, Wayne, and yeah. there's not a, there's not enough space for us at the current time because membership levels are still high. Okay. But we did. We've toured a couple of other locations that I think we went on as a committee last year. Um. But the reality is we'd have to go out to bid anyway. So maybe some locations that we're not looking at, maybe um, a property owner would rather rent to the town than individual companies. So, so I think that, you know, go ahead. Let's change some numbers. Let me just confirm that there's no What is the fallback position? As far as temporary space? Right. Um, as of right now, I don't believe we have a fallback position. So who's going to bid it? Well, I think we know there's a, there's a couple of people who own property on 3A that may bid it um, if they have empty office space. It's not an area we've toured yet, but right. I think so there's... The the, the the backup plan would be renting the, the office trailers and stuff and setting them up, so. Now, actually that's, thanks for bringing that up, Wayne. Um, do we know, are those, can we actually get trailers right now? Um, with supply chain, is that a thing that's? There are a couple of large right. companies out there and I'd just give them a call and ask them. Yeah, we, I mean, Michelle, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we, we Go ahead, Mark. We went through this, you know, you know, yeah, we went through this exercise a while ago and, you know, we were, we were basically, we were, um, uh, I haven't heard of any issues of being able to get trailers these days. Um, again, we didn't, we never really got 
appropriate buy-in. I think the best the best solution we were able to come up with was the area adjacent to Wilcott Commons. You know, we went through the library, we went through the music circus. We can't put them on the on the actual town hall site. Um, you know, uh, the pumpkin patch no go. Really, no parking there. Um, unless we were to pave the whole thing, um, and certainly not on the common. Um, I think we'd have, you know, seemed like the senior center adjacent to the senior center was the most plausible place, but um, that was that idea wasn't even well received to begin with either. So it was bad so and worse, if you will. I have a question. You know, the issue with the elevator. I mean, is there any sort of groundswell right now? to move out of town hall to because of that issue? Yes. Yeah, there is. Okay. So we're thinking if we could find a space and move out now, um, would it be temporary until we could fix the elevator or would it be temporary until town meeting and see if this is approved and then it becomes long-term temporary until the project is completed? Well, if the cost of repairing the elevator that you may be dis, you know, tearing out later is less than the cost of relocating today and the months or the months and months and months that you're going to be out there, you, you absolutely should fix the elevator. So you don't, you know, you don't, we don't have any costs of anything, you know. So we have a preliminary cost to fix the elevator. We do have that. Um, $100,000. Um, that's $100,000 before they get into it. Um, that is solely if they have to just replace the piston um, and it, one other component. But if there's more to it, which our facilities team believes there may be more to it, um, the cost is just going to escalate. The cost for temporary space, we're getting um, $24 a square foot. Um, That's the that's the market rate. I'm not sure. Um, How many square feet? We're looking at about four thousand square feet. Okay, that's twenty four dollars a square foot per year, plus utilities and stuff. So I guess one question there is: Does this project have full full support from the board of select to move forward? Because that the idea of moving out to then avoid the elevator and move out a little bit early only helps if this project goes through. Um, if, if there's not full buy-in on this project um, from, from the board of select, then I, I think that's a challenge. And um, I honestly, I, I, I don't know if you'll get that full buy-in until we have the CM on board and we have the estimate. So there's a lot of chicken egg here. Um, yeah. It's just the best way to approach it. So, could John, could you pull back up those that timeline? Um, sure. And, and it just just had a couple of questions there, and one, <clears throat> Michelle, is do we, if we were to have, we, we know we're going to need town, we're going to need a town meeting, and we know we're going to need a ballot to approve any kind of debt, excluded debt or debt override. So, what is the we talked about the time frame sort of, of of being able to, you know, sometime in September, I suppose, to get questions on the on the warrant for a early December town meeting. What is what is the timeline and how does it relate to town meeting to get items on the ballot for a January vote? So I'm not sure exactly on that answer, but since this would be a special um, ballot strictly for the purposes of the town hall building, um, I'm I'm not sure on the time frame. I'd have to get back to you on that. Okay, because for for us to have made the November election ballot, general election ballot, we had to submit to the state. By I think August what third or today yeah. or you August did two days ago yeah, or something. Yeah. So, so obviously there's a couple of months there. So if we if 
hoping to understand what that time frame is um, for us. And, you know, regardless of the cost here, I think this, I think a couple of these options would be, would be good to get in front of the select board to understand what they anticipate, what they're working towards so that we can complement their logic. I mean, because it, 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 there's a strategy here on how we present it with the, with the CMs and what, stra and what timeline we are presenting to them. And if we get, if we get some buy-in on our own side from, from the, um, the select board, I feel like that'd be helpful. I don't know, thoughts? I mean, So I, I agree with that. Um, and I don't know how quickly you want to get some buy-in from them. I'm assuming quickly. Um, we can see if we can get you on an agenda soon to see which plan they like best. I can certainly run it by the chair and the vice chair, but that's not the opinion and that's not pulling the whole board. So. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be helpful. I mean, it's, you know, we don't have to talk about the specific numbers. It's really just the timeline and the strategy behind it, and and what what um, what they anticipate. I can have that conversation. Oh, I feel I you know I just feel like we're guessing and presenting this to the to the CMs without a real good understanding. Well, the other, so here's the other thing, guys. I, the whole idea of, of a bid in hand, again, don't want to force it, if, you know, if if the time doesn't work. You know, if getting the buy-in is a little bit better and all we're waiting for truly is an estimate, yeah, okay, pump the brakes a little, extend the RFP bid, to, uh, the RFP timeline a little bit, get a little bit more info. Um, to be able to share with them, that's fine too. So then basically you're looking at, you know, kind of this option A and, you know, this, the time, you know, this time in here, you know, if this, if this bar moves a little bit, you know, that's okay, you know, because, but we're going, but we would be going with an estimate, a 90% estimate, you know, 90, 95% CDs. Um, that's, that's okay too. I mean, Every public school project that's built, you know, with the state, you know, comes up with a, a budget and then has to live with it, you know, for a year and a half. We're talking about living with it for two months, you know what I mean? Like, or, or two or three months to get us, you know, from an estimate, cross of approval into the new year and then go to bid. I don't want to jam, I don't want to jam this down here, you know, it, you know, this is this is not good for bidding when the bid time gets squeezed like this. You know what I mean? Because then people will either be scared away, won't bid, or will throw crazy stupid numbers at it. And that that's not good for that's not good for Cohasset. So is the next is the next step here to Michelle to try to get an audience with the select board, even a couple of them. And if you wanted me to happy to have a conversation with them with this slide like this and say, hey, what's the better scenario for you guys? Right. You know, and if the answer is no, and again, there's there's definitely some of this discussion about move out and how that goes, because the reality is, you know, look, you know, looking even at this top timeline, let's say we wait. You know, we get the approval, we start bidding, you know, when are you going out for space? When are you moving out? Now, I'm not super worried because, like I said, let's say we start here. We would let them know that you weren't going to, you know, you don't get the building till May. You're going to start. They've got submittals, shop drawings, lead times. You know, this job could have an truly could end up at an 18 month duration, but only take 14 to build because we need four months to just let them order stuff to deal with supply chain issues. Some HVAC equipment has such long lead times right now, you got to order it on day one, even though you don't need it for 10 months. You know, I mean, that's, we may be dealing with some of that. Um, 
So that's okay. So, you know, you could do this. And all we have to make sure of though, is that we've got the money for the temporary facilities baked into the budget that goes to the approval. So I, so I think we do present this um, to either the select board in its entirety or a few members or start socializing it to see um, what the appetite is. Because I think as someone stated, the other projects just aren't ready yet. They're not baked yet. Um, and I, of all the projects, this is probably the most baked of the ones that they're moving forward. Of course, aside from like sidewalks and streets, that's a plan that's baked. Um, I just want to show you, I included this slide. This was from a meeting we had with capital budget in March of 21. Do you know what I mean? We're talking, we were talking then about being, you know, that was when we were going guns blazing to try to make a March, uh, you know, spring of this year construction start, you know, so to the point of being well baked, you're good 90% drawings, you know, when we, when we go for, you know, when we go for budget. So. But, but, to, but to that exact point, look at where we've, We've kind of just kept. Oh yeah, no, it's time to the hamster wheel. Time to go. Time and, to go. And, and unless no, but unless they, unless we get buy-in from the from the select board, we're just going to continue to be running around in this hamster wheel. And these in this, all of a sudden, we're going to be talking about spring town meeting in 2024, and it's just going to be. We're almost there. We're almost there, and, and it's but. At some point, the Board of Select needs to affirm the direction in which we're going and, and have buy-in and commit to this thing. I mean, unless the numbers that we get back are something completely separate from and, and estranged from what we've been presenting. Um, You may not get the buy-in until you have a, a really good number. But we need to get that. We need to have the timeline so we can get to the number because oh, it's I, like you want to get us the number, but you're not going to tell us when we're going to build it. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, although I think maybe the tack that you know, Wayne's point's a good one. I mean, you know, listen, we're just talking about they affirmed the town affirmed giving this project to freeing up 200 grand of that million and a half or whatever that was earmarked for the job to do this to to do exactly this so what i still don't think it's a bad time to say hey listen select board here's what we're doing in five or six weeks we're coming to you with a number okay and we're going to need to know the answer to one of these two questions you know what you we're going to need to actually it's at that point we're probably, I don't know, maybe the, maybe there's still a chance to try to bid it. But point is, is let them know what we're going to be coming with, coming to them with. We're doing everything we said, we're getting the CM, we've been following that process and kind of doing it as efficiently and as quickly as we can, given the constraints of the application process and everything. I think it's good. I think you still prime them to say, guys, this is what's coming. Here are the scenarios. Here's what we're talking about. We don't want to wait to spring. Here's why we don't want to wait to spring of 24. It's another half year of escalation. Could be another four to five percent on top of costs we've already been talking about. We don't want to do that. So we're going to try for one of these two kind of scenarios here. Calling out to them, listen, here's when we're talking what we would be talking about, having to move out to town hall, like all of these things, other pieces that have to kind of play into this. We can kind of convey that to kind of prop prep them so that you're kind of hitting them with all the details first we still don't have the number yet you know that but when we come back to you next time we're going to need a decision so maybe it's not a bad thing to go to them with kind of all the rest of the info and the big price thing and we're still working on it guys you know because if we wait to come to them and start the conversation in four or five weeks are we going to get a decision you know what I mean? Or are we going to be bumped to the next meeting? You know what I mean? And then, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to try to start to communicate one of these two scenarios now. And if we can't get buy-in until 
you know, late September is what it is. Okay, so I'll socialize this tomorrow. Um, and if they choose to put it on the agenda, um, are we willing to have a joint meeting? Because we're having our agenda view our agenda review tomorrow for Tuesday night. Um, maybe they'll have an appetite to put it on the agenda that quickly. If so, do we have an appetite to meet that quickly? Well, we've got this information we can show right here and see, you know, tell them what we're going to do. And, and in five weeks, this is what we hope to have for you. And we just want to make sure that we're still, still, still on board. You guys are still good with this. Yeah. I think that, I think that's a great idea. It's, okay. and it, it can be, and it can be, it's really going to be just this, you know, it can be an, even an abbreviated version of what I just did for you. It can probably do it in five minutes. Yeah. Here's we are. Here are the firms. We're out for RFP for CM at risk. Here's the timelines we're looking at. And we just wanted to inform you guys in five weeks, we're coming to you with a reconciled estimate with the number. Do you see this? You know, are you guys still on board with having this? And you know, are you, are you on board with having this December or think about it, December town meeting, January vote, you know, does that work for you? Maybe we can come to you with bids in hand. Maybe not to be determined, you know, um, I don't want to talk to one of these three CMs now it's two or two we're, we're in the process now. So I don't want to, I don't want to favor any one of them by calling them and talking to them about this kind of this timing. I would rather that come out of the process. Yeah. But I think getting that, I think the selectmen would be very appreciative of not waiting five weeks to get something that they didn't know was coming. And, and therefore it's important because, you know, the train has left the station and, and we're going. So I would do that, Michelle, is to, is to express to them what we, what we want to do. It won't be 15 minutes. You could tell them it'll go to a half hour, but with questions, but getting on the agenda, I think is going to be important. Okay. I'll ask tomorrow. If you need me for any breakout with any one person, just let me know. That's easy. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And that's that's all I have, Phil, for tonight. We're moving along. Oh, so what I would like the committee to do, you know, I think it's the recommendation of the pre-call committee to move ahead and issue um, to go ahead and issue uh, invitations for the RFP process for Call Antonio, Commodore, and W.T. Rich. Yes, we, we just, we need a vote to proceed with the interviews. Is that correct? To proceed with the, the RFP process. Yeah, sure. request, so for, request for proposals and the interviews will be part of that, part of that process. Right. For, the, for the ones that respond, yes. Okay. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> Second and I'll do Second. both. Thank you. Uh, Wayne, you good with that? Yep, Wayne saw Chuck, yes. Mark? Mark Cameron, yes. Kurt? Kurt Lubitz, yes. Um, Carolyn? Carolyn Coffey, yes. And Phil Lear, yes, unanimous, thank you. Josiah? Josiah is with us, but he did not. Uh, I'm illegal. Swear, swear in so he can oh. Gotcha. All right, anything else you need, John? Thomas? We're good. Do you need us or anything else? Um, just one, one other question. So as we're going down, there's, you know, Phil and I spent, Phil Ween and I spent some time, I would say weeks ago, going through some of the drawings, um, starting to create our list. I think we got through a couple of pages after three hours. Um, uh, and I don't think, I think we kind of sort of just scratched the surface, if you will. Yep. Um, and, and we were really finding a lot of, uh, lack of scope in drawn in the old uh, town hall and the old auditorium space was one of the areas, uh, just generally speaking, Wayne had some site work uh, uh, points that were, were addressed. And, and I know some of those site work things, uh, uh, 
Johnson Roberts had heard before. Is there a, is there any way to get an updated set of drawings from them? Not for issuance to out, outside of our walls, but sure. if we're going to be, you know, a working document here that if, if, if they've made some progress over time, it would be, uh, do you, do you want that? Do to, you want that focus? Do you want what they have advanced for old, new, or both? Both. Okay. I would say both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me and, read and again, it's not going to be, it doesn't need to be a published set outside of these walls. Understood. So I don't know what they have to do to. No, understood. If, if, if you've, if they've advanced a drawing or a set of drawings beyond a certain point, can they send you a progress update of those drawings, you know, in the interim yeah. before they get issued, before they get issued again? And then, and then we can, uh, you know, we can continue that uh, page turn review. Yep. And um, and try and get through that. Sure, we can, I can follow up on that with um, with Phil or and or Natalie tomorrow. That's no problem. Yeah. I just think when okay. things at the auditorium. We just want to make sure that that everybody understands that we're going to refurbish that. What you're doing, yep. you know, and so the way it is now, if you show it to anybody, they say, "Oh, you have." Yeah, no, and and it's just just so you know, Wayne, I had a conversation with Phil about that after the the meeting where you guys talked about this initially, and he he acknowledged, yes, yes, and there there was one thing though that he was like, "No, we're planning on doing that, but we certainly could add it," and I'm not quite sure what the what the issue was, but. The majority of the items you talked about, he goes, yeah, it's just it's just not in there yet. So I think it's a good, no, this is a good process, and the page turn is always a is always a the best way to get through it. Right, painful, but the painful, but the best way to get through it. I heard one thing that said that they weren't going to refurbish the the floor of the stage. I guess as I heard something about that from somebody, see the sand and finish it off or something like that, which is a simple thing, you know, but. Yeah, no, I think that might that might even be the item he talked about, and I think that was his, if I recall correctly, that was his response. Yes, that's a that's a simple thing. You worry more about the bigger thing where you're like, whoa, you didn't think of X, Y, or Z. But yeah, adding you're not adding a ton of money to redo the floor and you know put a couple coats on it for sure. Because if we change that one, that one thing that everybody would see, that it's like, what oh yeah, oh no, wow, wow factor, no, hundred hundred percent, and. The flip side of that, when we did the vent, the Ventress building in Marshfield, you walked in there and that floor was so shiny that you don't look at some of the other things that there wasn't money for because people go, oh my God, look at how great this looks. And that's, so there's, there's good logic. There's good logic in something like that too. Okay. Is that it? Um, that's it on that topic. We had uh, a note here to discuss communication update. I'm not sure if we have anybody that can do that. So I can just tell you, um, Justin shared with me today that he's worked with um, David Frog on a couple of different video segments. Um, David is enjoying a vacation away um, and he'll be back next week and Justin will close the loop then. Um, and then he'd like to schedule time to meet again to see, you know, what the plan is and how you want to advance all of these videos and communications. Okay, great. Um, maybe you could have Justin reach out to um, Tucker. I know Tucker wants to be involved. He doesn't feel like he's doing anything. Yep. Could have make a nice that. meeting. That'd be great, though, if you could do that. Sure. Thank you. The rumor about bringing a, a number of projects up, it seemed like it was something to do with financing, you know, to be able to sell the bonds or whatever it is. Is there a schedule in someone's mind, maybe John, of what what money you need over this 18 months? In other words, if, if we did something and it went through in December's town meeting or something, would there, would the cost for that first four or five months be significant or would it be something that so, is just going to rise? So, so it's a great question. From a cash flow standpoint, probably not, but you would still need to be able to sign a contract for the CM 
acknowledging procurement of funds to cover the to cover the contract you're signing. So you know, it, uh, let's say the number sticks at 15 million. The GMP would be signed for 15 million. You know, town has to certify they have the, they, they have authorization for it. How you borrow, it's a different story. Like you're absolutely correct. If we're talking about a duration that becomes 18 months because we need to give them six just to wait for stuff, yeah, you're not going to spend. You, you know, the first third of the contract, you are not going to spend a third of the money. Now that being said. We are seeing more and more things in the marketplace right now that are asking for prepayment, which cities and towns never do, which they may have to get used to. Um, because certain things, 20% to, you know, to lock up an air handling unit or something like that. Not saying everybody, it, and it is the usually the exception of the rule, but it's stuff we're starting to hear about where was, that would be something that we would never recommend prior. Um, but, but short answer to your question, Cash flow wise, no, you would not need a bunch of money up front, especially if we're playing the waiting game for procurement for that first first quarter of the job. And they could use short term borrowing. And if, if there was another project that came up, they can combine that. Yeah. Yes. How the town, you know, as long as you have the authorization to get it and that becomes more of a question for the finance department, like what when you sign that certification of funds, do you have to have them in the bank or do you just have to have the authorization that you can borrow that's like you know that's a that's a legal question but i think you know i know i know that the schools we do you know 100 million plus they don't have it all when they start thank you and i'm sorry can i just ask one other thing about communication so um how did we make out with guilfoyle um are they going to help us i have not contacted them currently i was supposed to that's cut off my list somehow. Okay. What is the, uh, is the outreach the same thing or is that something different? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. All right, I'll find that and reach out to them. Okay. All right. Anything else? Steve, do you have anything for us? Kind enough to join us. No, I don't think so, John said it all. We like Michelle's puppy in the background. Yes. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Anything? We good? All right. Just need a uh, suggestion here to dismiss. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Thank you very much. Be well. All right, guys. Thank you. Take good care. Night. Good night.